Poultry farming in Kenya is playing a big role in Kenya's economy, with many farmers turning to the egg and chicken selling business. Today, we meet Diana Wamboy, a wife, mother of two, and poultry farmer. Diana, whose farm is in Kimende in Lari constituency, quit her job as an aggravate after hearing many farming success stories from other farmers. She opens up the doors of her farm to us and takes us through her income generating business. Diana Wamboy, married to Dr. Mokua, and this is Cat Mag's farm. We do more about the chicken layers in particular, they are the one we do in large scale, and also some broilers and some cane broth. In the beginning, I was not doing farming, I was running a business, an aggravate that is. Then I, was, I got inspired by some farmers where we used to visit with my husband. At that time he was working with Kenchik and I got the inspiration from some of the farmers and then I tried to venture into the same business. At her farm, there are two main categories of chicken, the broilers and the layers. The layers are mostly kept for eggs, while the broilers are kept for meat. Diana tells us that though there is not much difference in raising the two, the broilers are usually ready for sale at 35 to 40 days, while layers begin to lay eggs at 18 weeks. For the broilers, they take 30, 35 days to mature. For the layers, they take 18 weeks to mature so that they can start producing. In her farm, Diana boasts of a population of 2,000 layers with 1,200 chicks in the brooders. She, however, informs us that though she keeps both types of birds, she prefers to raise a larger number of layers as compared to the broilers, which she sells to the neighbors and consumes at her home. Right now, I have the laying ones, they are 2,000, and I have uh, those ones in the brooder, they are 1,200. The first step to rearing chicken is sourcing for the chicks. Diana orders her chicks from Kenchik and Isinia, who deliver them with a period of one week. While waiting for her chicks to arrive, she prepares the brooder for the chicks. A brooder is a place of safety where young chicken are kept warm, fed, watered and can be properly cared for. Diana ensures the brooders are clean, disinfected and fitted with lighting bulbs and a jiko to ensure that the heat is retained as much as possible. So after you place the order, that's uh, about one week. You go and uh, prepare a brooder. That's a small portion in the house. You don't, because in the beginning they won't occupy like the whole place. You will prepare a brooder where it will be a bit warmer and uh, the, it's supposed to be clean. We, we elect some uh, uh, lights and also we have some jikos for the warmth at night. That one, the chicks are going to be there for about a month or so. As soon as the chicks arrive, they're kept in their new home. At this stage, Dana does not separate the broiler chicks from the layer chicks since the difference in feeding is not as significant. The difference, as Diana tells us, slowly begins to show in three weeks when the broilers begin to add weight, hence separation is done to prevent the layers from hurting the broilers and also prevent wastage of food as broilers tend to waste food most of the time. But after this third week, we are going to remove the broilers because you, if you can observe at the, their back, they don't have these feathers. The layers, they are going to start pecking them at the back and most of the time they are going to bleed and maybe probably die. That's why after the third or the fourth week we remove them, we separate the broilers from the layers, the layers we leave them. Also the broilers do waste a lot of feeds. That's why we are going to remove them and leave the layers alone. Since prevention is better than cure, Diana begins to vaccinate the chicken from a very early stage. This is because it is quite difficult to control diseases in the poultry because they spread quite fast. She also administers anti-stress hormone to prevent the chicken from getting stress due to change in environment and transportation from the source. For the layers, Diana takes them through a vaccination regimen from the age of 7 to 28 days. During day one, we, we just administer some anti-stress and uh, some chick mash or we do the broiler starter cramps. This one we are, we are going to take for the first eight weeks. 
Then after that one month, we remove the, the gunnies which we, we put around the corners. I think. Then after that, we, we start with the vaccination. Seven to ten days, we are going to administer guboro intermediate. Then from day 10 to, to 14, we give another one we call Newcastle. Then from the 14, between day 14 and day 18, we give another one, another guboro. Then between the 20, no, the 18 to 28, we give another guboro. Then the other one we are going to inject, intermasculine one. That one is called the full, full pox. No, full typhoid. That one we give an injection, intermuscular one. And the other one at, at week 11 to week 12, we give another one called full pox. That one we, is a wing stab. The broilers are vaccinated twice, that is between the age of 7 to 16 days. The separation of the two types of birds is because the feeds start to vary from the second week. This is also due to their maturity process, where broilers are ready for consumption much earlier than when the layers begin to lay the eggs. Diana strongly dismisses the notion that most farmers inject their chicken with hormones to speed up their growth. She clarifies by telling us that the injections are usually to prevent attacks from diseases. Some of the diseases that affect the chicken are fowl pox and fowl typhoid that Diana vaccinates the layers against at the ninth week because it is more likely to affect the layers at that age. The broilers, however, are not affected because by the fifth week, they have already been sold. By the variation of the growth, there are some, at, at some stage, you can't get the, a certain this full typhoid, it occurs on the ninth, after the ninth week. That's why we don't vaccinate the broilers because we won't reach that ninth week. The only time you, with the layers, they are going to be with you maybe for two years or so. That's why you have to go to that extra mile of doing the full typhoid and so. The, the diseases, they are similar. Even the broiler, you can layer them because after the fourth month, also the broilers lay. After you bring them in, you give them the broiler starter cramps for, that, for the first days up to maybe a week or so. Then, and then you can administer some anti-stress or some cheek formulas to avoid that stress because of movement from the hatchery to the place down that you have brought them in. The purpose, they are for vaccinating, for preventing them from getting infections because controlling the poultry diseases is more advisable than curing the actual disease. Yeah, that's the reason why we do the vaccination. But most of the farmers, they are not the farmers. Most of the people out there, they misquote. Especially with the breeders, they say that we inject them, they are like boosters for growth, but they, they ain't boosters. They are like the same way we immunize the children, they are the same way we immunize these chicks. The growth of either type of birds is highly dependent on proper care from the first day. This includes proper feeding and adequate water. During the first two weeks in the brooder, Dana feeds the chicks with chicken mash. The feeding from the broilers changes after two weeks when separated, when they are then fed with the broiler finishers mash. The chicken in this farm, as Dana tells us, are fed at 2 p.m. every day. We feed them at 2 p.m. in the afternoon, up to the feed is going to take them up to the following day, 2 p.m. Diana debeaks her chicks at the age of between 8 to 10 weeks. This prevents cannibalism, where the chicken hurt each other using their beaks. This was a great contributing factor to losing her chicken when she started chicken farming. As she tells us, she would lose approximately 20 chicks in a day. The process of, being, of debeaking, we usually do it with a certain thing we call a tooth creeper. That one is, for me, I do it with the tooth creeper. That one you use it for pigs, for creeping the tooth for the pigs. Then what you do, you just hold the bird like this. You put, you place your this finger there. Then you like, I, I, I have some guys who cut the, the birds for me and then I do the debicking myself. You, you pluck this one and also you pluck this one and then you burn. That's it. So simple. You don't do it at when they are this big. You do them when, when they are only, this one they have only three weeks and I'm going to debick them. Mm. You can imagine the way they are pecking you and they are already debicked. We were removing 20 birds a day. They remove the intestines completely. Each and other. Yeah. And this, the, the whole stomach is left empty. After the 18th week, 
the layers start laying. From a population of 2,000 layer birds, Diana collects a total of 55 to 60 trays in a day, which she sells at the local market in Kimende and city market in Nairobi at a price range of between Kenya shillings 300 to Kenya shillings 320 per tray. Like uh, they, they are on peak, they are laying well. Yeah, that one we, we collect 60 trays to 55 to 60 trays per day. I usually some local customers and also when we do them at large number, we, we usually take them to city market. When business is good, we usually sell the a tray of eggs at 300 shillings and it can usually go high up to 320. According to Diana, when the hens start laying, the business is not labor intensive since all you need to do is collect the eggs and ensure they are fed accordingly. Now this is where the fun is because you don't have like to work throughout the day in this uh, place. You only have to come and put the feeds, collect the eggs and then you are good to go. Diana tells us that a layer gives good produce for a span of 8 to 12 months after which the production begins to reduce. After two years, they label these birds as X layers and sell them for meat at a price of between Kenya shillings 300 to Kenya shillings 380. At this point, they have gained a total of 1.5 to 1.8 kgs. The best production you can get after maturity, it is about one year, eight to one year, eight months to 12 months. From there, they start fluctuating and the, the, eggs, the shells become weak but they can lay up to two years, but the, the, you see fluctuation in the laying. You see it's, it's not uniform as it is after the fifth to 18th month, yeah. Just like in any other business, chicken farming is not rosy at all. Diana has had her fair share of challenges, some of them being the fluctuating market prices, which affect her profit as a farmer and poor quality feeds that affect the layer's output. My greatest challenge with the layers is that now the market for the eggs, they have really gone so down, but it varies with time, because at times the market is good, the, at times it goes so down. And also the challenge with the feed, we, at some time it affects the eggs production. We can go and hit maybe 95, 96%, but at times it can go down to 70%. Those are the only challenges we have about the eggs market and also the feeds quality. Despite these challenges that Diana faces, she is still optimistic and she would encourage other farmers to venture into poultry farming. The advice that I can give to that farmer is that they should seek the right information, do their calculation first, because most of the farmers we start at a very high note and without putting things on a paper and that's why we reach it at some point you rear this bird when it's at it's that month you dispose it because the funds it, it usually drain you when it reaches to that level of that month it usually feeds a lot that's why you should first put your financial house in order seek the right information know where you are going to sell those eggs because if you like rear a thousand birds today then after those few five months you get you have your eggs but you don't have anywhere to take them now that's where the challenge comes comes in from you have spent more than a million with those birds now you have the eggs and you do not have in a particular place where you are going to take them so first of all you should put your finances in order you know that i'm going to require this million i have the million i'm going to be getting this amount of eggs i have a place to take the eggs she, however, advises farmers to ensure that they do their market research before they begin the business.